What's up guys, Brennan Myers here. So I'm gonna explain to you how you need to start doing calisthenics, what you need to do. For those of you who do not wanna work out within the gym, this is a video just for you, all the calisthenics guys. I will explain the different variations, the different progressive exercises that will help you master certain skills that are also used within calisthenics, the basic moves of calisthenics. So we're talking a pull up, dips, push ups, and even a pistol squat. All right, so first of all, we're gonna start with a dip. If you can't hold yourself in an upright position, a fully extended position, then you will not be able to complete this dip. So the first step, stay in that fully extended position. I want you to hold that for exactly one minute, okay? Second step, I want you to go into a negative as slow as possible down. I want you to stop when you're Elbow joint goes into a 90 degree position, all right? So you don't wanna to go too low, then you're really putting a lot of stress on the muscle fibers within your chest. So, second position, I mean second step. Slow, all right? Your third step, you're gonna come down. Explode up by pushing off of your feet. Your fourth step, you're gonna come down fast, Come up halfway, all right? That's your fourth step. So you're coming down fast, coming up halfway. Do not hit your feet on the ground. Here it is again. This will really train your triceps, put a lot of stress on your triceps, so you really get used to the movement. Your final step will be the full dip. Now let's get to the push-up. As many individuals understand, the push-up is used so much in calisthenics. Actually, most of the time is overused within calisthenics, and that's why a lot of muscle growth is not occurring within all these athletes. So, how do you do a push-up? So, there's a few steps, just like the dip, that I'm gonna show you. First off, if you can't do a regular push-up, always go on your knees, all right? This is the easiest way to complete a push-up. First off, the more you have your hips flexed and your butt back, it will be easier for you. So if you can't even do push-ups on your knees in a fully extended position of the hips, then you will do this variation. So the first step, you will have your hands just outside the shoulder width apart, all right? Making sure your elbows are staying in. So don't let them flare out. That's what a lot of athletes do, and it's not the correct movement. So keep those elbows in, all right? So you're going to come down, keeping those hips flexed all the way down. The next variation, you're going to fully extend, stay on your knees, fully extend those hips. Your third step will be going into a push-up position and coming down as slow as possible. Bam, come back up. Slow as possible. Bam, come back up. Next step, you will find a bench or some type of platform and you will do push-ups on the bench. This is a lot easier to do than once you're on the ground. Remember, keep those elbows in, don't let them flare out. Second to last step, just like the dips, you're gonna come down and come halfway up, right? So explode as much as you can. This is not the full range of motion. This will get you used to the push-up. Now you're gonna do the full range of motion coming down and all the way up. Now let's get to the pull-up. This is where you're going to be in a pronated grip. You're going to be fully extended on your elbow joint. Your glenohumeral joint, your shoulder joint will be in a full abducted position. Your scapulas will be retracted and depressed, okay? So you have a big chest. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull yourself up to your chin is over the bar. Now, this is the most important exercise within calisthenics. 90% of the exercises completed in calisthenics are all variations of the pull-up, so muscle-ups, a lot of aerial back claps, 360 claps. If, even if you want to do a handstand up in a pull-up, on, on a pull-up bar, you have to be able to muscle yourself all the way up. So, how do you do a pull-up? 
might I add, wherever you're doing an isometric hold, wherever your angle is, your joint angle of that isometric hold, you will get stronger at. So if you're, if you're training and you're doing isometric holds here, you will not get stronger here and you will not get stronger up to that position. You will only get stronger within that sticking point. Yes, that's good for certain exercises for certain individuals, but to complete a pull up, you do not want to do isometric holds. So what we're going to do, first exercise, first movement, a jump off the ground, okay? Up into the up position, as high as you can. Your second movement, you want to pull yourself up as much as you can. If you can only pull yourself up to here, hold that position for two seconds, come back down. Come up to that position, hold for two seconds, come back down. Up for two seconds, come back down. Your third step, you're going to need a partner for this step because this will actually help you train this exercise as much as possible to master it. You want to have the individual come from behind you and hold your legs up behind you. So. Your leg are going to be crossed behind you, and they're going to lift up and slowly help you up until you're all the way up to the pull up. So each rep, you want to do less and less assistance, and then soon enough, you will see how much easier the pull up gets. The last final step before you can actually complete the pull up is going to be you want to find a, a platform or something that will get you up into the up position of a pull up, okay? And what you're going to do, and this is how I train all my clients is you're going to go into the up position of the pull-up and you're going to come down as slow as possible and then you will see where you are after that. Alright, so you're going to come back up. That's exactly what you're going to do. Now, I need to add for all these exercises that I've already explained, that to train and to master a skill, you have to work at 100% of your work rate. So what I mean by that is you cannot be fatigued. So if you're doing that exercise, okay, if you're trying to train your lats for the pull-up, or if you're trying to do dips, if you're trying to do push-ups, make sure you're 100% in between each set. So you have to rest longer, rest longer. That's your pull-up. Now let's get to the pistol squat. All right, so before I get started with the pistol squat, it's extremely important to understand if you're only gonna do calisthenics, you need to work your legs. There's so many guys within the calisthenics game that do not work their legs and they're completely top heavy. Work those legs, all right, work them. I'm gonna first say that my pistol squat is absolutely horrible because I had many, many ankle sprains because of football, I played football in high school and in college, and I've sprained my ankle so many different times, so it's extremely hard to stay on my heel. It's not an excuse, because I, I haven't been training pistol squats as much, because as many know, I squat and deadlift instead of doing more leg calisthenics exercises. First off, you want to be able to do a squat, okay? The most important thing with a squat is you want to stay Outside of, just outside of shoulder width apart, your toes are gonna to be pointed outward, okay? You wanna make sure you have a big chest and your, your spine is in a neutral position, okay? And what you wanna do simultaneously is flex your, your knee and your hip joint. So at the same time, you wanna flex them both. Bam, see how they're flexed? Bam, and as I do this, my chest is big. Might I add before I, I attempt this squat, I'm so used to having weight on my back that keeps me upright, my back will go and round a lot. So bear with me. Shoulder width apart, chest up, you're gonna squat down, bam, until you're below parallel. Bam. Bam. Most important thing is keeping your knees pushed out. So squatting down like this, right? Once your knees come in, a lot of injuries. Your MCL especially has a chance to tear when, you're, when your knees come in. Also, important to state, the most important thing within a squat, make sure you stay on your heels within the squat. Let's get to the pistol squat. The squat will help you master the pistol squat. So once you can do a lot of squats on your own with two legs, then you come up to a surface, you go to a wall, 
maybe a post or something. You hold on to it, okay? And the first step is you're coming down slow. Make sure this foot is pointed outward, okay? So you're gonna come down slow. Bam. Come back up. Come back slow. Bam. Come back up. That's your first step. Your second step is gonna be coming from the down position to the up position. So you wanna pull on your fixed surface that you're holding on to and it will help you propel you up. It's almost like assistance. Okay, so if you're here, all right, pull up, bam. Pull up, bam. Your third step, you're gonna go from the up position. This is your full range of motion with a fixed surface. So you're gonna come down, bam, come up. Down, up, down, up. Now, once you can get that, then you go into the pistol squat on your own. Like I said, my ankle flexibility is absolutely horrible. So I'm gonna try and do this as crisp as possible, but my heel will come off, off the ground. 99% of the time it does. I need to train it more, as I said. Please bear with me. So you're down and you're up. So you're down and you're up. As you can see, my balance is off, but that is your pistol squat. All right, so there you have it. That's how you begin doing calisthenics. You do all those different variations, all those progressions, and you will complete the dips, the pull-ups, the squats, and the push-ups. Those are the four basic movements within calisthenics. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below, message me on YouTube. I also have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, so follow me there. If you have any other questions about programming, design, or if you want me to guest speak at your event or school or anything like that, please email me at lefty, L-E-F-T-Y, J-R as a junior, pro, P-R-O, at AOL.com. I will be happy to do anything I can to influence others, inspire others, motivate others so they can start doing calisthenics as well. Remember, there's a new video every week, so please subscribe. I thank you guys for watching. See you soon.